Welcome to People Love Process. The best way to improve your skills as a creative is to simply practice your craft as often as you can. For myself, I'm always looking for any excuse to create artwork, whether it's graphic or more illustrative in nature. Even when I'm doing something distinctly non-creative, like watching an old 1954 film noir movie called Suddenly, starring Frank Sinatra, I kind of pay attention when something intrigues me. Now, it's a great film. I think it was his first, but I'm not completely sure. But as I was watching it, Frank Sinatra turned directly to the camera, and I loved the shot, so I paused the movie uh, the movie scene I was watching, and I captured this screenshot as shown here. Uh, we're in Photoshop right here. And uh, I've had this image in my personal projects folder for quite a while now and decided it was time to create a design with it. So let's get started. We're going to first start in Photoshop, and that's because we're going to be working from this photograph and creating... Um, kind of a, a graphic, high-contrast portrait of, in this case, a young uh, Frank Sinatra. Um, I love the fedora he's wearing. I love uh, the fact that he's looking directly at the camera. So uh, this is uh, going to be a fun one. So I'm not a Photoshop expert. I do a lot of stuff in Photoshop when I'm doing different projects that have nothing to do with vector art. Um, Maybe it's doing photographic type stuff or for brochures, client mock-ups, et cetera. Uh, but in this case, we're going to be creating reference that we can use to draw from. And it's really important uh, to kind of think through this and do things that are going to facilitate your ability to look at it and to do shape and form to simplify it. And that's all we're going to do here. Anybody can do what I'm going to show you in Photoshop. It's pretty simple. But this was the screen capture. Now, because it was an old 1954, we're not talking, you know, 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution. This was the old format of a TV exactly. And you can see it's cutting off top of his hat. We'll, uh, I'll just kind of mock that in as we go along. Uh, but we're going to create reference that we can draw from from this. So the first thing I do is I cut it out of the background. Now, I'm not going to walk through all that. I've already done that. And it's the exact same photograph. It's just getting rid of the background. We're going to isolate it even more uh, to just the face. But I'm going to show you the things that I pay attention to when I'm working in this style and I'm trying to get reference that I can draw from. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use an adjustment layers. Come down here and go to levels. And we're going to blow this out so it makes it more of a distinct uh, kind of high contrast image that has really dark darks and really light highlights with a little bit of mid-tone so we know how to deal with, um, detail it with some minor shading uh, moving forward. So let's go ahead and adjust our levels over here. And I'm paying attention to the face. I don't want anything to be completely blown out so we don't have any mid-tones. And I don't want things getting so dark that we can't see any detail either. We just need to see enough detail to draw from it and simplify from it. So uh, this, I usually start on the right where it's the white. And I just pull this in and just go to a point that I think is blowing it out enough that we have distinct highlights like on his forehead, nose, cheeks, um, but it doesn't blow out all this mid-tone detail. Now, the dark we have showing right now is fine, but I want to make it even darker. I want to kind of make it more uh, cast shadows, if you will. So we're going to pull in from the left side, which is uh, the dark side. So we'll pull in to... Uh, I don't know, we'll start there, then I'll go to the mid-tone, and I'll pull this over, something right about there, maybe a little darker. Let's pull this over. So I'm going for something like this, where we have dark enough in the eyes, but we see a little bit of detail. Now this might be blowing it or uh, darkening it up a little too much. But this is where I know when I draw it, I can add more of a highlight over the top of his eye, kind of as shown here. 
uh, on the left, I can make that adjustment as I'm drawing. Uh, this isn't, uh, how do I put it? You're not just tracing the photograph. You're giving yourself something to look at and then uh, figure out how to map out what would technically be called a contour drawing. And I'm going to walk you through that when we get to Illustrator. Now, if you want to come back here and you want to adjust this, maybe you want this to be a little more blown out. You could pull it in even further. Maybe you think it's too dark. You can pull this back. But notice you lose that nice contrast of the darker. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to put this back. I think I had it 87 or something like that. Something like that. So I think this is going to work pretty good. The only thing I don't like is notice his hat is just completely black. You see no detail there that you can look at and discern from. And this is where you're going to have to isolate different aspects of your reference image, in this case, Frank Sinatra. And that's all we're going to do here. I think these levels for the face are fine. I'm just going to turn those off really quickly. Um, I cut them out from the background, but I also have a cutout up here if I go ahead and select it that's just isolating his head because we're not going to do his shoulders. It's just going to focus on his head here. So I'm going to make that selection. And what I want to do is go to the lasso tool and I'm just going to isolate just his hat. So I'm going to hold option down. So I'm removing from this selection. We'll go up around his head like this and come down here to this side. So I'm just going to lop off that part. So all we have now is this part selected. That's fine. So I'll select the layer with the cutout of the full figure, and I'll go Command-J. That'll isolate the hat. We'll move it above the layer adjustment here. And we're going to go ahead and make another layer adjustment just for the hat. So I'll go ahead and come down here and go to Levels, create a new level adjustment. I'm going to go ahead and option click so it associates it or locks it into the hat only and it won't affect uh, um, the face down here. If I turn on this layer adjustment, you can see how the face is affected. Now we're just going to make the adjustment to the, the levels for the hat only. So on the hat, again, I'm going to bring this over and blow it out quite a bit. I want it to get lighter. We'll go there. And then on the black, I'll bring this one in right about there. I think it's too dark, so I'm going to drag the uh, mid-tone values over a bit. Something like that, and maybe blow it out just a little more right now. Something... Something right about there. I think that looks good. It gives us enough detail to see the highlight side and some minor detail on the left where the band goes around the hat. But I like how you can see the brim. And this looks a lot better than it did, if I turn these off, than that. It gives us more detail. So I think those are both going to work fine. And it's at this point where I'm just going to do a Command A and then I'm going to go up to Image or Edit, and I'm going to go Copy Merged. So it's going to copy the visual image of everything shown right in here. And then I'm just going to go Command-V to paste it. And you can see it just flattens it into a singular layer here with all those adjustments in place. Now, I'll leave this in my build file if I ever want to go back and make an adjustment. Um, I can always readjust those um, uh, the levels for whether it's the hat or the face, but this is going to work. I'm going to reselect this cutout because I want to cut out just his head. So I'll go Command J like that. We can toss that. Now we have his head isolated. And whenever I'm working on reference like this, sometimes on this image, it's pretty simple to see the perimeter shape of the image. That's not always the case. Sometimes it gets light on the edge of whatever you're working on. In that case, you might want to make a perimeter selection like this. And on a layer above it, you could uh, select black and you could go down to stroke under edit. And in this case, you could add a three point. Maybe it's even a two point 
uh, black line just to define that edge so when you start drawing, you know where it ends and where it stops. Um, I didn't really have to do that here, but that is something I do uh, when I need to. And now we're going to go ahead and move over to Illustrator, and I'll walk you through the rest of the process. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll switch over to Illustrator. And this was the source image once again I did a screen capture of. Uh, this is the reference I created in uh, Photoshop and blew it out. And now I'm going to draw on top of it. And this is where uh, the process comes down to what I would define as uh, deductive reasoning, or not deductive reason, like visual deduction is what I meant to say. Looking at the reference, this is a photographic reference, but you're not just merely tracing it, you're using it to guide your drawing. So if you look at the top of his left eyebrow and his right eyebrow, and his nose and mouth and chin and everything else, is it shaped exactly like how I drew it? Well, no. Is the top edge of his, um, his hairline here kind of really indicating hair? Well, no, that's where uh, your artistic prerogative comes into play. And so I'm alluding to the fact this is where his hair inter uh, interacts with his face, uh, his eyebrows, this just a little indication of hair there. And then I'm simplifying the forms, whether it's the highlights above his eyes, whether it's the highlights showing up in his ears. And I'm not drawing any of the mid-tone detail at this point. It's just everything that's going to make up the base art. If you look at the bottom of his nose, uh, this shape looks nothing like how I drew it that I'm going to build from. Uh, this one is a lot more simplified, but it's okay. It's going to work well. It's still going to reinforce that darkness that needs to be there because of the high contrast imagery. Uh, but this is how um, I drew it out. And this isn't even a super tight drawn. It's pretty loose. And I think that's going to that's gonna work fine. So what we're going to do at this point is I'll turn off the reference images and on this uh, scanned in image, I'll go ahead and set this to 20%. And then I'm going to lock this layer and we're going to build some of the content uh, for this design. Let's go ahead and just zoom in on his face. You always want to zoom in whenever you can. It makes building vector art a lot easier. First, we're going to build this entire shape that makes up the front of his face. And so where, where do you start? Well, I usually start wherever it comes to a point. So we'll go ahead and start on the top left and I'll grab my a pen tool. I'll go to graphic styles. I have different sizes set up here. I think I'll do this one and we'll, wherever it comes to a point gets a point. So I'll put that here. And as we're going up here, I'll probably put an anchor point somewhere around here and I'll pull it out. And I don't try to finesse the curve to get this to match up down here at this point. I'll come back and do a second pass and I'll do all that. Then we get over here and on this one, um, I'm going to try not to use plugins at all. And I'm just going to show you natively in AI. And when it comes to this kind of zigzag for his hairline, wherever it comes to point, gets a point, those are easy to discern. This can be controlled by a Bezier handle. And then when it gets here, it goes into a curve. So we'll put a smooth anchor there where it comes to a point, gets a point. So we'll just put in these like this. A lot of people try to build it perfectly in the first pass. And in my opinion, that's just, you're kind of wasting your time trying to do that. It's a lot easier to try to nail your anchor point locations. And the more you do this, the easier it is uh, to discern where to place those. This is easy, wherever it comes to a point in the drawing. And once again, this isn't a very tight drawing. I usually do a tighter rendition based off of a rough, but on this one, I'm doing a rough because you don't always have to to do that, and as you get build, as you get better with your vector skills, um, you're going to be able to build off of a less precise drawing because you're smart enough to know uh, how it should be shaped and form as you're building your vector art, and that's the beauty of it. The more you do something, uh, the better you get. That's the way life in most cases goes, 
and it's no different when it comes to vector art. Now, when it gets into the eye, I'm not going to try to build this. That's going to be easily built with shape tools, and I'll show you that in just a second. We're just focusing on the face and the face only. So I'll pull this out a little bit. This will come to a point. We'll adjust all of this as we come back to it. And I'm just placing these all at anchor point locations that are what would be the, the, a corner anchor point. Then as it comes to the ear like this, this would be uh, what is a smooth anchor point. There's only two types of anchor points in Illustrator, corners and smooth ones. Corners, uh, the Bezier handles don't translate through the anchor smoothly. And so you get vertices like this, whereas a smooth one, it controls the path smoothly and helps you create those elegant curves. And that's what you want. So wherever it comes to a point again, gets a point. These are easy to discern. And then as we come up here, we'll place these where they go. This is gonna be mostly a curve. So I'm gonna go down to where the apex of this curve would be right about here and I'll pull it out. And then as we swing up here, because this is more of a corner, if this was curved up here, I wouldn't place an anchor point in between, but because it more or less comes to a, not a complete point, but a very subtle curve, I'm gonna put one here so we can control it better like that. And then when it comes here, I'll point, pull out just a small, little handle then as it dips down into the okay uh who is it oh now i can't remember the name of the person that always calls out the 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 oh i can't believe i can't remember it uh he's always pointing out for me what this part of the human body is it's the philtrum i might have gotten that wrong i should know that since you've been uh give me a bad time about that which has been hilarious because he did it on the Darth Vader one, and he highlight Darth Vader's nose, and he goes, Space Fultrum, or whatever the name is for that part. That made me laugh. So um, I appreciate a sense of humor. Um, that's one of the most, uh, for me, uh, somebody who has a good sense of humor is probably somebody I can get along with because... Um, I like joking around like that. Okay, we'll go wherever it comes to a point, gets a point. Let's go ahead and finish this. I don't want to get too far off uh, the rabbit trail. Although, man, every time I do a, um, a workshop, <laughs> I always go off on rabbit trails. It's kind of fun, though, because it uh, the audience likes participating in that as well. So... When it comes to point, gets a point, all these are gonna be curves, so we'll just focus on that. Then as it comes up into the eye, we'll go ahead, we're gonna adjust all of these, and I'll come up here. And again, I'm not gonna build that eye, because we can do that with simple geometric shapes, specifically the ellipse tool. And I'll pull this out, and wherever it comes to point, gets a point. And I think this curve can be made by the handle pulling out of this one. So I'm not going to put any anchors there. I'll just go directly here. That looks really off, but trust me, it'll make sense as I go back through it. So we'll pull this one out because it's coming into a curve, then coming out of the curve. We'll pull this one out. Once we adjust all these handles, it'll perfect our um, in shape. And then as we go about here, we'll have one probably right about here. And then I'll close the shape. So this is what I would call a rough build. Now, a rough build is focused on trying to get the anchor points in as close to a perfect position um, as you can. You'll never get it correct all the time, but the more you do this, the better you'll get at it. That's the nice thing. Now, this is where I'll go back in and yeah, stop showing me ads in my own videos. Ugh, those annoy me so much. And they don't give you ability to just turn it off. That's the part that is just stupid. We pay subscription, they're still shoving ads at us. 
Good job, Adobe. Okay, um, now I want to adjust my anchor point. Now you can go to the anchor point tool and you can grab a path and if you pull on it, notice it's going to reveal a handle here and reveal a handle here. And that's one way you can reveal a handle. And if I go ahead and pull this one up, you can see we make most of that curve right there with that handle. Um, there's another tool I like using to do this, and it's using Passcribe because it gives you these white nodes. And this is where I am going to use a plugin because it just goes way faster, is I can grab the node and just pull it out. It makes it so much easier. It doesn't manipulate the path. It doesn't break anchor points at times, uh, which you can do uh, by using the native methodology. That's the whole reason I use plugins. It makes the process easier. Again, if you need to zoom in, we're gonna zoom in on this because I'm gonna go ahead and you can use anchor point tool. Everything I'm showing you can do natively. It just might take a little longer because the tools aren't as refined as the plugins I use. That's just the fact. Adobe might not like that, but it's true. If I grab the path and I adjust it here with the Anchor Point tool, it does these kind of adjustments just fine, and it pulls out the handles like that. That's good. I'll go back in. I'll still adjust these like that just to make sure it doesn't get too thin. And then on this one, I think that looks good. Go back to the Anchor Point handle, and I'll pull this one. But notice how as I'm pulling this one out, on the bottom right, you see how it's moving the corresponding uh, path? Um, this why I don't really use this. This is why I like using the Passcribe because I can go like this. It says, oh, here's your node you need for the ghost handle. And I can pull it out. And notice it doesn't move the opposite uh, the opposite segment of this vector path. It, it's so much more elegant to work this way. So that's why I use plugins for that very reason specifically uh, for doing this kind of work. I use uh, that plugin. But if you want to use Anchor Point Tool, it's not like you can't get the look and feel that I'm getting. You can. It's just going to take a little longer because it'll mess with other parts of your artwork. And uh, if the developers of Illustrator actually use their software to create like I'm creating here, they would realize why that's not ideal, but they don't, so they they don't care. Uh, we'll go back in here with the, uh, notice how this is wanting to snap. That's because I have smart guides. This is where smart guides is good uh, for building, but at times when you're doing little detail and you don't want it to snap, you have to go command U to turn it off. Now that it's off, I can make micro adjustments like this and it won't try to snap. So you'll have to toggle it on and off as you build. Command U to toggle it on, command U to toggle it off. It's a great feature, but at for certain types of work, like little subtle curves like this, you'll want to toggle it off. And once again, that's Smart Guides, Command U to toggle it on and off. And I'm using that all the time, and I'm turning it on and off all the time. So we're making little curves like that. I think that looks fine. We'll come to this one, and this one kind of bends out and then bends back in. So this is where we're going to do kind of a S-curve sorts. This one will bend out, and we'll bend this one in like that, and then we'll finesse it. I think that looks good. And this one down here, we want this to bend in, and this one at top, once again, I'm using those ghost handles because it just makes the process go so much faster. But again, you can use the anchor point tool grab a path and bend it. I don't like leaving anything straight. By the way, does that look bad? Well, it doesn't look bad, but does this look better? Yes, it looks better. So that's why you want to put those subtle, you don't want a line to be ever too straight in a, especially something that's in the context of an illustration. Um, it just always looks better when it's ever so slightly adjusted. We'll do that. We'll come in here, and again, I'm going to switch back to my plugin because I want this to kind of bend out and this one to bend in. That's going to be the ideal way to get that path shaped the way we want. Then these here, easy. These are all kind of curves, so we'll just kind of bend them like that. We can adjust the Bezier handle. 
By the way, I think I mentioned this in previous video, maybe even a couple videos. Uh, Bezier Curve is named after Pierre Bezier, who was a industrial designer for Renault uh, cars out of France back in the day, and he came up with the math behind Bezier curves and how to use it to create more elegant car bodies, like the shell that they make out of um, the metal, uh, just so it wasn't so boxy. So that's kind of an interesting history of how vector art came about actually started uh, in the auto industry and it was brought into interior design through uh, AutoCAD type programs and then eventually vector art for doing 2D artwork like we're doing here. So you get history in people love process, not just... Now notice how this broke that. In Illustrator, the only way to fix this is you have to go up to the control panel, and you want to always make sure you have the control turned on. The newest feature is contextual taskbar. That gets my way. I never use it. If you like it, you can use it. Uh, select the handle, and you have to click this, which will turn it back into a smart object. Um, I'm going to undo that because I'll show you what the plugin does, uh, Vector Scribe is I could grab this handle, move it, notice an S will show up. That means, okay, it's now, it's now smooth again, let go, and now it's corrected or fixed. So I love the fact that they built that into the plugin because they knew the way Illustrator's coded, you can break that. So that is what I would call a very intuitive um, common sense feature. And We'll go ahead and adjust these. So what I'm doing here isn't super complex. You just don't want to rush it. You want to take your time. I've simplified my drawing, deduced the shape and form into a simple manner that isn't distinctly uh, tracing the photograph, but it's kind of bringing a more artistic uh, rendition based off of the photograph. Like that, we'll go ahead and adjust this down here, pull this out, I'll grab this handle just to adjust that, like that. This has to go down a bit further, so we'll do that. Maybe not so wide, like that. And then on this one, maybe pull that over a bit. I want to say fulcrum, Ful not fulcrum, that's not the right word, filtrum? He's going to make fun of me again. <laughs> I'm going to get in their email. Okay. Uh, we're almost there. Just a few more. Like that. And then I'll adjust this bottom part of the mouth. Select this, pull it out, reveal the anchor. This one I want to bend in. This one I want to pull all the way up to kind of create that curve. This is too far out, so we'll bring that back down. Then I'll pull this down. Something like that. That looks fine. I'll pull this in and pull this up. This one, I'm kind of deviating from the way I drew it. I think it looks better narrower. Something like that. I think that'll work. Just this one. Looks good. Grab this. Like that. This kind of come in a bit. So you can see I'm zoomed in quite a bit, and this is usually what I do because I just want to focus on each section, each area of this path as I go all the way around. I usually go in a clockwise fashion, but it doesn't matter. You can go either way. Um, just that curve to get a nice round top to his cheek. 
And then I'll adjust these. All these are pretty elliptical in nature, like that. I think we have to get this curve for the eye and a subtle curve on the bottom. Sometimes I'll deselect just so I can make sure that looks the way I think it should. I think this needs to go up a bit like that. Just a few more. And I think we'll call it good. Then we'll create the eye. The eye shapes are super easy. It's just elliptical shapes. Like that. I think this needs to hold up. To create that curve. Oops. Pull that down a bit. Okay, just a few more. This one. Finesse it. This will represent his eyebrow. And then on this one, it has to bend up. And I think that looks pretty good. So that's how I would finesse all those curves, go back around it. And I think that's looking pretty good. Let's focus on his eye because uh, probably the easiest area of all of them to build is going to be his eye. So we can go to elliptical tool. We can still use the same outline. And just holding shift down, you want to get a perfect circle. You know, something, something like that. I think that's... I think that'll work. Let's go ahead and make a clone of it. Command C, Command F. If you have the contextual menu bar with the shape selected, you could hit the duplicate button. Same thing. I'll make the pupil of the eye. Once again, I'm holding a shift and option just to do it to the center like that. Not that I have to, but I usually select that to get the same thickness or weight that is to the stroke. I'll clone this. I'm just going to slide this down just so it passes just a bit and then go up until it snaps to the center of the pupil and then I'll just distort it this way. This is going to make up that interior part of the eye. Again, I'll just sample the weight of the stroke we're working at. That's fine. I'll take this, clone it, Command C, Command F. Figure out what size I want for the highlight, something like that. I want it to overlap the edge of the pupil, though. Kind of like that. Maybe even a little. Maybe even a little bigger. A little ever so. Yeah, something like that. Okay, and now let's zoom out so we can see the other eye. I'm just going to select all the shapes I use for the eye. I'll clone them, Command C, Command F. Again, you could have all these selected and hit the duplicate button on the contextual menu bar and bring it over. I'll drop them there, but I'm going to bump this up one notch using the nudge key on my keyboard. And now we're going to we're going to go ahead because this is going to be filled with white. So this background area in the negative part, this is going to be black. This is going to be black. So we're going to make a copy of this eye shape. And just so you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to fill it with blue, select the shape of the face like that. And let's go to the Pathfinder and go minus front. So we're just knocking that out like this. And then we're selecting this shape. I have to make sure I'm not losing track of what I'm doing here. <laughs> Okay, so we have this. There we go. That's what I want. And then I also want, um, I want to take this shape and this shape 
and I'm going to go minus front. No, 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 no. Not minus front. I want to go intercept like that. Then I'll take the pupil, bring it to the front, select this shape, and just trim it. So this will be black, this will be the color of the eye, this will be the color of the front of his face, and then the highlight. So we'll do the same thing on this side. I'll go ahead and fill that so you can see it. Select this, minus front, like that. We'll select this, and this shape will be intersected. The pupil will bring to the front. Once again, if I color it, you can see it's on top. Notice how it's hard to select other shapes at times. Um, that, that's another thing that, I don't know, at some point Illustrator made it harder to select. Unless you're extremely zoomed in, I shouldn't need to be any more zoomed in than this. Uh, it's kind of annoying. But we're going to go minus front like that. And now we have all the elements we need for the face. So that's how I would build... Uh, these elements, of course, like a good cooking show, I have all the base art here. And when I create, I isolate different aspects and uh, different parts. So I created the face that we created here. I created the elements in the eyes, as I showed you on the left and the right, or the right eye and the left eye. Uh, the hat, I built this as a separate piece for the brim, and then I built the top of the hat separately, and then I built all the interior shapes that make up the highlighting separately as well. So this is where I would just start selecting shapes, whether it's the two shapes of the hat here, and I just go Unite, and it brings them together. I select the outside area of the face, and I select the ears along with the hat shape now, and I unite those with Pathfinder like that. And then the only other part, I go in and do the same thing I showed you previously on the eyes, but I'm not gonna bother to, to redo that again. But that's how I combine all those shapes. It's always easier to build in segments, build in parts, and then fuse those parts together using Pathfinder. Uh, if you prefer using the shape building tool, you can. I don't find it faster for this type of building though. So. When it's all said and done, this is our final art. We can turn off our sketch. And it's at this point that I would select my art and just to kind of test it where it's at, I would go ahead and fill the background shape with black like that. And then all the interior shapes, these would be filled with white, no outline, like this. Select the highlights, those would be white as well. And I might even take these shapes that make up the color that's going to be in his eyes. And if we colored, got rid of the outline, colored these black, you know, we could go and I'd probably do something like this just to get the fact that that's going to be a different uh, a value. And it's at this point that I would print this out and I would figure out how to create um, all the, the, the shading by drawing on it, looking back at that reference that I used, uh, created in Photoshop. So this shows all the drawing here, and this is where I would go ahead and select this shape, and we'll just go multiply like that, and I'll usually set the value on something like this to about 30, just so I can see those, lock it, and then using the same principle, I would build all my... Uh, shapes like this on top of it. So right now I have the top shape of the hat. So let's go ahead and turn off the, the shaded drawing. So you can see I have this top level of the hat in the face and I have all the shading shapes that make up the detail of the face and the detail of the hat. So if I make a copy of all the interior white shapes that make up the face on Frank Sinatra and I clone it, go Command-C, Command-F, and just so you can see where it's at, we'll color it blue, uh, light blue. Then I'll select these shapes like this. And by the way, I should point out that all these shapes here, if I go to the appearance panel, notice they're a compound path. And the shape I uh, copied that make up the interior shapes of this portrait, 
these are also a compound uh, because they're independent shapes. If I drag this out, this shape on the brim of the hat is actually not connected to any other shape. So it won't work as a group. You have to make it a compound path. So if all these are group and you can check the status by going to the appearance panel with an object selected, if this says group, then you would have to go to object, compound, and make. I use a keyboard shortcut F7 because I use it all the time. Both of these are compounds, so I'll select both now and I'll go intersect, meaning wherever they overlap, that's the new shape it creates. I overlap them. When you work with Pathfinder, and it's not this way with the shape building tool. The shape building tool is good about retaining a compound nature. It's very consistent, but for whatever reason, they don't carry that consistency through all the areas you can make a compound with, such as the Pathfinder. Because if we look at this now, it's reverted back to a group. So you'll want to go back to object, back to compound, and click make. Or if you use my keyboard shortcut setup, set up a keyboard shortcut. So all you have to do is hit F7, and now it's a compound path again. And if we just to see the aspect of what this could look like with the color applied, we'll apply the same gray we did in the eyes and look how cool that looks. So I think this is gonna look good, but this isn't how I want the artwork to look. We have a distinct tonal family we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna turn that on here. I don't want black. This is gonna be a dark blue like this. And then we're gonna go ahead on his eye color here, we'll select those. That'll be this nice kind of baby blue color. And then we're gonna use kind of a, a really cool light bluish, I, it's not really gray, but I'm using it kind of like gray. And we'll just color all the detail like that. And look at how cool that looks with these colors in place. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the terminology or the nickname that Frank Sinatra has um, uh, in the industry that he was really popular in. He was a crooner, a great singer. He was an actor. And uh, his nickname was Old Blue Eyes. So that's what we're going to do now is we're going to create a poster design where we're going to use that terminology, Old Blue Eyes. And if we go ahead and drop Frank Sinatra in, uh, I think that's gonna work good. But now I'm gonna take a texture, and this texture is actually, it's called DeSoto, because it came from a rat rod show I went to. There's old DeSoto vehicle there, and I took a photograph of the panel of the side of one of the doors because I had this awesome texture on it, created this texture from it. And it's a resource I've been using for years. I've been using this one for a long time. So all we're going to do is we're going to um, apply that same. Well, first, let's put it in position. So we'll go here and I'll go like this. And then we're going to color this the same exact color as the, um, the detailing on the face, the shading on the face, which is the light blue. And we're gonna go ahead and go to transparency and we'll go to, let's see, we'll go to multiply. That looks pretty good, but we'll knock the value down to 30. Oops, nope, 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 nope. Not like that. I think I want to do it darker than that. Yeah, we'll do 70, that looks better. Then we have a shape on top, which is the same aspect ratio as the poster, and we'll just mask it into that shape. So I think that looks pretty good. Let's do another one here. These are a halftone texture set I created years and years ago, right, just halftoned. Uh, just nebula shapes because it just looks really, really cool. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to colorize it the darkest blue here. And we're just going to drag it over and I'm going to position it in our design kind of like that. And then I'll go ahead and multiply this, but I don't want it full value. I just want it dark, but not as dark as the the base art of Frank. And then we'll select 
uh, masking shape, and I'll go ahead and mask that into place as well. And that's how I created the final art for this. So you never know when something will spark a moment of creative curiosity. For me, it was an old film noir movie. I love film noir. So if something intrigues you, I encourage you not to ignore it, capture it. You might not do anything immediately with it. I didn't in this case, but eventually at some point you could. And when you do, it's a great way to flex your new artistic muscles and experiment and try new things. A big thank you to my viewers. I appreciate your support. And please never hesitate to post questions, suggestions, uh, or correct me on that divot right below the nose and <laughs> what it's called, or share a method you think I uh, should have used instead of the one I did use. I'm uh, kind of hyper-focused on my methodology, and uh, sometimes I can learn new things as well, just like anybody else. So I don't mind that at all. Uh, feel free to do that. I by no means know everything about Illustrator. I know that for a fact because I have a friend, Igor and Monica. They know Illustrator inside out way better than I do. And they're the ones that I ask questions to when I get stuck on something. So as always, like, subscribe, become a member or share a link to this channel with someone you think would enjoy the content. All of that helps, and I appreciate it if you do. Until next time, thank you for watching People of Process. And as always, I hope this content helps you to improve your own creative process.